Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and this past week we had iOS 16 beta 3 updates, iOS 15.6 beta 5. We also had the MacBook Air, the newly designed version, go up for pre-order. We'll talk about all of that and much more in this week's news update for July 11th, 2022. And this week, apparently Mac Rumors got their hand on a memo that says that there's going to be a bunch of different devices that are going to be considered vintage or legacy according to a list. And this list includes the early first touch bar max. So that means max with touch bar from 2016, the 13 inch, the 15 inch as well. The MacBook air 13 inch from early 2015, the MacBook 12 inch from early 2016, the late 2015 iMac, both 21 and 27 inch, and then iPad pro 9.7 inch. All of those are going on the vintage list, apparently by the end of this month, if they haven't already. So that means they'll no longer get regular updates. It still does mean though, if there's some major updates for security, they could see those. Now, Apple's newly designed MacBook air M2 is now available for pre-order and they were quickly pushed out to August as far as the delivery dates. You can see here as I scroll down August 10th to August 17th is the current delivery dates. And if you go in and con configure these or customize them, they could be even later. So you'll see here, if we configure this maybe to the top model here, sometimes they're earlier, sometimes they're later. It just depends which configuration and which color. However, if you're looking to pick one of these up, usually Apple will have a few configurations in the store when they release this coming Friday on the 15th. So that's typically what happens. They'll usually have a base configuration and some higher end configurations. If you can find those, they may not have the color you're looking for, but it, they usually have at least a few of them. So if you're wanting one of those and you weren't able to pre-order, definitely check out your local Apple store, but you need to do it in the morning. Now, going along with that M2 MacBook Air, they also released USB-C to MagSafe three cables in different colors. So now you can get one that matches your device. You've got space gray, then you've got silver, which is pretty typical. Then you have midnight and you also have starlight. All of those are available now and they're each $49 in the United States. Of course, it could vary around the world. Now, iOS 16 beta three introduced a new lockdown mode. You can find that under settings, privacy and security. And at the bottom there's lockdown mode. I wanted to ask you if this is something that you would ever use as it disables a ton of different features. So you can see if you turn it on, it disables things with messages, FaceTime, web browsing, shared albums, device connections, Apple services, and profiles. So this is something that's meant for people that might be at high risk of attack and isn't really recommended for everyone. So I'm curious if this is something that you'll find yourself using, if you would use regularly, or maybe just once in a while, if maybe you thought that your device was under threat. I'd love to hear your opinion about this in the comments below. Apple's authorized service providers this week were sent a memo stating that Apple's looking into an issue with the latest iPad mini that I have here, where it may not charge properly after updating to iPad OS 15.5. I haven't heard from a lot of you stating that this is an issue, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you're finding that you're having this issue, this one seems to be charging. Okay. But since we're so close to iOS 15.6, that update may address the overall problem with this along with other issues and more. So again, if you're having that issue, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you've been wanting to use Apple wallet, but maybe your cards aren't available yet, band contact and also maestro should be available later this year. According to Belgium's Belfius bank, there isn't a specific date yet other than later this year, but hopefully we'll get more and more. If you're able to use this, it's great to use it for contactless payments and just super easy to tap your device. So those additional cards will be coming very soon. Today, Apple posted a new weekly update as what's new in fitness. Plus there's a new artist spotlight. So if you use this to work out, you have a new artist spotlight from Prince as well as Katy Perry, Daft Punk and Elton John with some new workouts and more. So if we go into one, you can see the different workouts here with all the different music that may be something that you would love to work out to. So they've been posting new updates regularly, and this is the first time I remember seeing an actual video for the weekly updates. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it in the description below. Also to go along with fitness, Apple has started its annual Apple watch fitness challenge for those who work at Apple. Internal employees can compete for prizes and points, and those who earn at least 1,240 points will get a fitness jacket. According to Mac rumors, you can see what it looks like here. They were able to obtain a photo and and so if you work at Apple and you're able to get this or tell us more about it, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. 
We've been hearing about different legislation coming from the U.S. and the EU and other places, and apparently the EU has approved legislation called the Digital Markets Act and Digital Services Act. This will regulate larger companies such as Apple, Google, and Meta, and will force Apple to open up iOS and allow easier use of third-party browsers, uninstallation of default apps, and much more. It could even force them to open up iMessage. So it looks like the EU is pushing to make it a much more open system. They did this some time ago with Windows, and they're really pushing and focusing on iOS now. Now, I'm curious to hear what you think about this. Apple may have no choice to do this unless they wanted to leave the European Union, which I don't see happening. So we could have a very different operating system soon. And maybe that's why we didn't get an overhaul this year with iOS 16. Maybe they have to rewrite everything if they're going to open up certain parts, but also keep our privacy intact. Now, a week or so ago, I mentioned that Apple is working to get more sports on Apple TV+. Plus. They've got Major League Baseball. They're working to get things such as soccer or football, depending on where you live. And they're apparently trying to get American football, NFL Sunday ticket. Now, this is something that was a bit of a rumor before, but apparently has been confirmed by the NFL commissioner who's looking into it, saying they're still deciding and they'll have a decision by the fall. So by the time football season comes around, we could see that on Apple TV+. Plus. So that's great. We're getting more and more here, and it's pretty reasonable considering it comes with Apple TV+. Plus. You can just get all of your different games live and more. So we could see this with NFL very soon. Now, as far as iOS updates, iOS 15.6 beta 5 released last week. I would expect the release candidate this week, as soon as maybe Tuesday at this point. That seems to make the most amount of sense. And of course, as you probably have already heard, iOS 16 public beta is out. So the public beta is available. I have a separate video or I will have a separate video on how to install that a little bit later, but that's available. And anyone that wants to try it out can just make sure you have a backup of your device in case you're having issues and you need to revert back. Now, of course, we're waiting for iOS 16 beta four, and that's where the public beta and the regular developer beta usually come into sync. They'll sync up, have the same versions, and then they'll have all of the same features at that point. Typically, that's what happens every year and I wouldn't expect that until the following week. Once we get past beta four, we typically have weekly updates. So we could have quite a few by the end of August where we would have up to beta seven or eight, depending on what Apple decides to do with a final version releasing in mid September, like they normally do. So we could see that very, very soon with the public beta syncing with beta four and then having them released together. Now watch OS nine was rumored to have a low power mode. However, it doesn't have it yet, but may be coming in a future update or just specifically on the Apple watch series eight. We do have a power reserve mode that's in our battery settings. So if we need to get through the rest of the day and just tell the time on here, we can do that, but we don't have a traditional low power mode like we do on iPhone. So we could see that. I'm not sure why it would be exclusive to maybe watch series eight, but maybe it has to to do with a new chipset, although that's rumored to have the same chipset. So it could be some other reason, or maybe we'll just see it on all watches a little bit later. Now, iPhone 14 models this past week were rumored to cost up to $100 more due to inflation and rising production costs. This wouldn't be surprising, but Apple has typically eaten these costs and just tried to keep the phone the same price. However, it's possible we could see an actual increase this year. Now, third-party cases have been spotted shown online by Duan Rui of the upcoming iPhone 14 models, and they seem to match up to the models that I have here that I've shown in other videos, where we have the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Pro, the iPhone 14 Max, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And it looks like they're going to have similar camera sizes, but they are a little bit bigger than the current iPhone 13 Pro Max. But the third-party cases do kind of reflect what we're seeing here, and that makes a lot of sense. And also with the upcoming iPhone 14 models, more sources are saying that the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Max models will have last year's A15 Bionic in them where the pro models would be the only ones to get the major upgrade this year with the a 16 bionic. This could be due to maybe just Apple trying to differentiate the models a little more, or maybe it's due to a chip shortage. We don't really know, but that's been backed up by a couple people now, not just Ming Chi Kuo, but also Mark Gurman agreeing with it. And it seems to be what Apple's planning. So it could be a very different year this time around for the upcoming iPhones. Now in this week's power on newsletter, Mark Gurman said that the Apple watch series eight, might get a rugged version like we've heard before and that it would be called the pro version 
similar to what we have with the iPhones. It would replace the edition versions of the iPhone and be around a thousand dollars where it would be pro have a larger display and a larger battery. So it could be a more ruggedized, more sports focused version, maybe for mountain climbing, mountain biking, extreme sports, or just for those that want a nicer, more durable watch. So we could see that this fall. A recent patent won by Apple shows what a redesigned AirPods Max case could look like. The first generation case that I have here is very minimal and doesn't feel very Apple-like as far as its overall design and going with a $500 pair of headphones or more. The new case looks like it would be more of a pouch design with a separator in the middle and a magnetic clasp. So that makes a lot of sense that they could redesign it, make it a little bit nicer, although it could be a lot more bulky, but maybe they found a way to fold up the next generation a little bit more. Apple was also recently granted a patent for AirPods safety. With this new safety feature, it would use the AirPods microphone to alert you of things nearby that could be dangerous or hazardous, meaning maybe you're walking down a busy street, it would lower the volume of the AirPod closer to the street to let you hear some of that traffic to make sure that you're aware that it's there. So there's many more examples of what they could do with this. Of course, it'll probably be optional and you could just turn it off if you wanted to, but it's a nice idea that you could actually use this this in a busy city scenario where maybe there's an emergency going on, maybe you're on a plane, you need to hear the announcements, it would automatically lower the volume and take care of that for you. Let me know what you think of that though in the comments below. Recently, there's been a lot of news about Apple making an AR and VR headset, and we're hearing even more and more about the second generation, even though we haven't seen the first generation yet. Apparently, they're working on the second generation with Samsung as far as its displays, and according to Ming-Chi Kuo, there will be two options for the second generation a more expensive and a cheaper option that would fall in line with what Apple's done on every product it has from the iPhone to the Apple watch to the iPad and Mac. So having two versions of it doesn't seem odd to me, but I do think we need to see that first generation soon. Given that we're hearing so much about the second generation, I would assume Apple's going to show it sometime later this year. But again, you just never really know. It's rumored to come out sometime around January or at least get our first glimpse around January of 2023. And so that's everything for the news this past week. iOS 16 public beta is pretty exciting for those of you that have been waiting to try it out. And of course, be sure to check out all the different videos I have featuring all of the different features within iOS 16. If you have any additional questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.